Well, here in Bankhead National Forest, we have uh, Armstrong Cave, which is historically a hibernaculum for uh, the endangered Indiana bat. It's one of only uh, three hibernacula that harbors any kind of substantial population of Indiana bats in the winter time. And we know these bats spend the winter in that cave, but we don't know where they go in the summertime. And uh, that's of conservation interest because it's an endangered species. We'd like to find out where they're going to see if uh, there's anything we can do to help support that species wherever they are in, in the summer. This population has been affected heavily by white nose syndrome in the past couple of years. So where we used to have over 150 individuals in this cave, uh, the last few years we've had just a couple dozen in the cave. White nose syndrome uh, is a fungal disease that affects bats while they're hibernating. So while their metabolism is lowered, this is when the fungus takes advantage and invades the bat's skin. So it causes the bats to overheat as they mount an immune response to the fungus and that causes them to expend critical fat reserves that they need to make it through the winter. Bats are important because they're insectivores. They eat in Alabama billions of insects a night if you total up all the bats we have in the state, which ends up being a, uh, a great service to the agricultural industry. So one research study calculated the bats contribute over a billion dollars in services annually to just the corn crop. Another study calculated they provide upwards or over four billion dollars in agricultural services by eating insects and reducing the need for pesticides. So they're really critical to our food source and our economy. The Indiana bat specifically contributes to that, but that bat has been on a decline for several decades now, and it's listed an endangered species. So we are interested in finding out what we can do to support that species here in Alabama. So we have two, two different methods we use to try to uh, catch bats. Um, one is called a harp net, and the reason it's called that is it resembles vaguely a harp. So there's lots of strings strung vertically, monofilament line, that the bats can't detect with their echolocation. So we put that in front of the cave, and um, as they emerge from the cave, they hit that and they drop into a bag that's up beneath the trap, and then we can um, take them out of that and, and investigate them. Uh, the other method we have is um, what's called a mist net, which is just what it sounds like. It's a very fine net that, again, the bats um, can't detect with their echolocation. We string that across a, a bat flyway, and those uh, bats they like to um, use corridors that are easy to move along while they're uh, foraging will erect these mist nets over that pathway and as they're uh, traveling in the evening and foraging they'll hit that net and they become entangled in it and then we can extract them from that net and inspect them. So the Department of Conservation helped organize and really put together the planning to bring together many different partners uh, to make this project happen. The goal of this project is to identify where these bats are spending their summer um, and specifically to find, the, so the Indiana bats, they roost and give birth in uh, what are called maternity trees and these, these trees have certain characteristics that the bats um, are looking for, but the ultimate goal is to find a maternity tree, uh, one that we don't know of. Um, so we can determine where these bats are going in the summertime and then uh, use that to provide more um, support for that species.